Welcome to this episode of Locked In. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about the Hover Air X1 Pro Max. If you've been looking for a pocketable, super easy to use drone to capture epic cycling footage or anything else for your outdoor life, this video is for you. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned and let's get into this video. Now, first off, I want to go over who Hover Air is. If you don't already know, these drones have been all over YouTube, but in case you've been living under a rock, here's a little background on the company itself. Hover Air started with their X1 product, which you may have made and again, may have seen on YouTube. And it was a really pocketable self-folding drone just like this, but it was a little limited on the specs as far as using it for content creation like I would because I've been desperately in the market for some type of drone like this, but I have zero drone experience as far as flying it myself or using any other products. This is literally the first one I've ever tried. So basically this is a fully enclosed, very intuitive designed product so that you can use this to capture those great third party shots like you have somebody filming with you on your epic adventures no matter what they are. So going into this, I was definitely hopeful, but again, with no experience, I didn't know what to expect and I was pleasantly surprised and hopefully you can see that in all the footage that I was able to capture with this. And this is definitely staying in my toolkit for content creation going forward for this channel and beyond. So as far as our product line goes, I'm gonna be focusing on their Pro Max. This is gonna be basically the top spec model, which is gonna shoot up to 8K footage, but they do have ones at lower price points with different specs for the X1, X1 Pro and X1 Pro Max. But again, we'll be focusing on the Pro Max in this video. But make sure to check out the links in the description if you wanna see what the comparison is to see maybe if the other models may be more suited to what you are looking to do. So as far as using this, there are basically a couple of standout features that I really did like using this product. And I used it a ton over the course of a couple of weeks, a couple of different rides in different locations to really push this to its limit in my experience. And again, coming from someone with no drone experience. So that being said, for a couple of big standout features, one was the super intuitive controls on the top of the unit which makes it super simple to literally power this thing up, select the mode that you want to shoot in and go within 30 seconds. This was something that I was really nervous about using at first because I didn't trust the unit, but it worked extremely well. And I was never able to really fault it, as you can see in all the footage that I've been shooting. And I try to put it through its paces based on places I normally ride. And most of this footage you're going to see is on my e-bike, which is obviously more powerful because I wanted to see if I could really push it to its limit as far as tracking, especially at higher top speeds. And that's really where this thing shines. So as far as the controls go, basically you have your main central power button at the top here. That's gonna turn the unit on and then you're able to quickly, and hopefully you can hear this on my microphone, but it easily gives you a audio call out for what mode you're changing into as well. So you can easily cycle through all those modes and you can go into the app and refine which ones are shown and what the preset settings are but you can also easily change the parameters for the mode as far as how it follows you either low, medium, or high, as well as if it has any distance presets for the different modes that you're shooting in, which is really convenient because you don't have to pull out your phone and you can easily just pop this thing out, put it on your palm, hit the top button for it to start. And then within, like I said, 30 seconds, you are being tracked and you are ready to rock. The next thing that was a big win was the folding and compact pocket size that this thing comes with. Now it does come with a carrying case, which you can kind of throw on your bike. Honestly, I love throwing this thing in my frame bag on my road bike, but it is easy to store in multiple different places. And it is super lightweight, especially for the capability. And again, the 8K footage you can shoot out of this device. The Pro Max is coming in at just 192 grams, which is less than half a pound. And with the form factor, especially with it folded up, it does fit pretty easily in most frame bags in my experience but this would definitely fit in a medium sized handlebar bag as well. And the other thing I really like is basically the structure and design of, of these propeller covers. This is developed out of what they're calling HEM, which is hyper elastic material. And this has been super durable and has bumped into a few things, but looks still brand new. As far as the different flight modes, there's 10 different ones you can use to select again within the app to refine the amount that's on the device. But typically I was using the follow mode the dolly track mode and the zoom out mode most often in my experience for cycling that tends to work the best and i was really happy with the results in each of the modes now let's get into the really big standout feature for this compared to a lot of other devices especially ones that track you is the speed that this thing can follow track you in which i thought was crazy this camera will go up to 26 miles an hour with bursts up to 37 miles an hour. Now, as far as hitting those speeds up to 26, I comfortably hit over 20 miles an hour regularly on my class three e-bike, which does go up to 28. 
So I wasn't worried about this thing not being able to hold up and follow me on my rides, basically going the regular speed that I normally would and not having to really slow down. Now on my road bike, obviously I'm not hitting those kind of miles per hour as often. So that's something that obviously this is more than enough power unless I'm doing a very, very steep, long descent. Now, like I mentioned before, I was able to use this in dolly track mode, which is where it basically sits in front of you. And again, you can set any of these modes into the low, middle, or high position based on what kind of shot you're really looking for. And this thing was really intuitive and smart and had great stability even when moving all around. And even when I made a full U-turn, basically it would just go from dolly track mode into follow mode instantly. And I didn't have to really think about it. It just obviously changed the shot that was being taken. As far as video spec goes, this is able to shoot in 8K at 30 frames per second, 4K at 60 frames per second, as well as you can shoot up to 120 frames per second for extra, extra slow-mo. What does this mean when you're actually using the product? Basically, it means that typically when you upload into YouTube, I upload in 1080p most of the time. So that way, if I do shoot in 4K, it gives me the most amount of options to reframe or crop the image and still have great quality. Having 8K gives me basically double that resolution, so I can really vary up that single shot into using it into multiple shots to give it a variety of looks based on what I'm looking for and retaining that high-end quality that I want out of all my content. Now, you can go into the app and control this via your phone if you want to, having extra manual controls to control exposure, ISO, and other parameters of the camera to really refine the look that you want instead of just leaving it in automatic, which honestly, for most of this footage that you're seeing, is how I basically left it. As well as I did test this kind of at dusk and dawn, you can't really tell because the footage honestly looks better than it did actually outside, but they did improve the low light capability on this camera compared to the original model of the X1, as well as one product I wasn't able to test in this video, but they do make ND filters for the front at different strengths from eight to 64. That would be honestly great, especially for summertime if I was using this to really help refine the image so I can get a little bit more motion blur, especially on really bright days. The next feature that I didn't know that I needed that actually worked really well that I didn't even think about until just using it is the Omni Terrain. Basically what this is, it allows the drone to fly over reflective surfaces like water. And that was something that you can see in some of this footage where I did a zoom out and not thinking that that would actually trip up some other drones in the market. This is something that it allows it to comfortably fly over there without getting freaked out to see where the drone is so it can comfortably come back to you. Also, another great feature with this, which I actually did have a test out and I'll play that footage over this, is it does have rear active collision detection. And I was actually able to test that when I sent this drone through basically a dolly track mode in a very tight area where I was coming out of a campsite. And it was actually able to kind of stop itself and it bumped up against the tree a little bit but didn't fully crash and hit it at full speed and then basically turned itself back around, went to follow mode and followed me through the rest of the trail, which again, I was trying to push this product to its limit to show you what you can basically expect and the reliability out of this product. And I was really happy with the results, having a very slight shimmy in the footage when it did bump into the branches, which were very thin and probably harder to see, but recovered very well. And again, totally usable footage that I was happy I was able to get. So as I mentioned, my two favorite modes were honestly the dolly track mode and the follow me mode. Now, in my experience, I did notice that the dolly track had a little bit harder time at those higher speeds as far as tracking goes. It did really well, but sometimes it would come a little bit close to me. But again, usable footage and it never knocked into me, but it, it was something that you just kind of have to get comfortable with the unit. That was one thing that, again, having no experience with these type of products before, I didn't know what to expect and I was constantly double checking on it, but I never had the drone freak out on me where I had to like double track back and go get it. As far as follow mode, this thing is rock solid. After basically trusting it after a few rides, I was able to comfortably get up to that 26 mile an hour speed on some of this off-roading footage you're gonna be seeing, going downhill out of a campsite, and it was super rock solid. And what I wanted to test was its reliability of tracking me specifically because I did ride next to my buddy Mario, who is actually on basically the same bike that I am. And we're both in nondescript clothing. And I wanted to see if it would follow him if me and him separated. And again, super rock solid and was able to follow me perfectly on all my footage that I was able to use this device on. And I've been really excited to add this to my content repertoire to get some cool, extra cool footage, especially when I'm by myself filming. If you've been interested in getting this kind of device, please make sure to check the links in the description below. I do want to let you know that Hover Air did provide me this product and they did pay me for this basically product insight is what I want to call it. This is not an independent review, but it is by no means shaping my information I'm providing you. These are all facts based on my personal experience and the facts of just the specs of the device. 
I only like doing these types of videos for content. That is something I use as a tool to create footage for my product. It is not something basically cycling specific. That's why I wanted to accept this because it does help with the channel. As you guys have probably heard from other YouTubers, YouTube isn't paying the bills to keep the lights on. So these type of things do help out the channel, keep this alive and keep me helping pumping out footage for you and other content that hopefully you like seeing. So that being said, please make sure to comment in the comments below if you have any questions about this. I'm in my comments every single day and I try to answer them as quickly as possible. So thanks for watching this episode of Locked In. Let's get locked in.